Hey everybody, it's Mo. No foe, just Mo. Faux show. Alrighty, so today we're going to be talking about Aero Manga Sensei, one of the most cookie cutter garbage anime that you could probably watch with all your friends just to make fun of. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, here's the plot for Aromanga Sensei. I'm gonna cut this down to really simple. Big brother, little brother, a couple other girls. That's pretty much all you need to know. Okay, bye. What? Alright, so you, you want me to explain this a little bit more in detail? You got it. Aramanga Sensei is essentially a genre that I like to call Summer of Parent Neglect. What that means is that there's little to no adults in this series. There's only like a handful besides background characters. Um, the reason why I say that is because the parents are not there. And you know, this may sound a little dark. Um, okay, so let me get back on track. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and turn it around. Turn it around. All right. So, the plot for Aromanga Sensei revolves around Masamune, the older brother, and Sagari, the younger sister. She's adopted, by the way. Keep that in mind. She is adopted. Okay? That's it. That, okay? We, we good? We good? We good? Okay, so, she is adopted. Okay? These two siblings live together alone because their parents passed away. Um, you know, it's not really specified how they passed away. And if it was, I probably missed it just because... This anime is like really over the top, just kind of loses you. Anyways, bring it right around. Um, so, essentially, Masamune is the older brother who takes care of his little sister, who after the tragic accident happened, she locked herself in her room, you know, lost herself away from the world. Um, but the older brother has no clue what she does in there. He just accepts that she is staying in the room, and that's it. Um, so, Masamune is, he's a high school student, but not just that, he's a light novelist. What is that? Essentially, he writes short novels, um, that generally are used for anime, anime scripts, you know, you know, a lot of people do it in Japan. There's, instead of being a novelist, you're a light novelist. Well, in the light, and when you're writing light novels, it, it's exactly what it sounds like. Very small novels. And he works for a publishing company, and, you know, in the very beginning of the episode, he, what he does is he goes to this production company, he pitches out a few more ideas to his uh, publicist, and talks about, like, how he wants this specific illustrator to do his cover art. Who is this illustrator? Nobody knows. They only go by the name of Aero Manga Sensei. And the reason why that person is called Aero Manga Sensei is... They draw erotic anime style. Like, it's very smutty and very trashy. Um, so, he goes home, normal day, starts watching a stream of Aromanga Sensei, and then he notices, wait, there's something similar about this room that they're streaming from. Wait a second, that, that looks like my little sister's room. Well, hold on, no, 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 no. And so he just kind of like keeps watching the stream, and so Aromanga Sensei thinks that the stream has ended. So she gets up, she, she stretches, she takes off her mask, but the face isn't shown in the camera. So it's like kind of like off-centered, kind of like, like if I did this, and you could see my arm. Yeah, that's exactly what was going on. But essentially what she was doing was taking off her clothes, you know, changing. With that being said, the older brother was just like switched into panic mode and runs up the stairs and knocks on her door like, hey, hey, the stream's still going on. So in that moment, what happens is that he has found out that his favorite illustrator is none other than his little sister, Sigiri. Um, so after that, needless to say, everything goes downhill. Um, 
because he's like, oh, you're Arrow Manga Sensei, that's awesome, this and that. And she's this, like, cute, like, shut-in little girl. Like, she doesn't like to interact with human beings. And so, like, it's, you know, she, she just kind of, like, talks in this really soft voice. And she doesn't really want to say anything to him. And so she shuts him out. So in this anime, it's very lighthearted. It's just about them getting to know each other, the, the, the real selves. Um, and then, you know, obviously there's a few other uh, characters that go around. So let's go ahead and talk about them. The first character that we get introduced to is Tomoe. Essentially, she works at a bookstore, ironically, and is best friends with uh, Masamune. So they kind of have like that childhood best friend kind of vibe. So that's this is kind of going into the waifu wars kind of dealio. Um, so we have our childhood best friend, Tomoe. And honestly, she's really cute, really fun, um, but there's not a lot to her. Speaking of not much to a certain person, let's go ahead and talk about his producer. Next, we have Ayame. Ayame is the producer. The producer is very much a producer. You know, hey, deadline's here. I'm not sure about this idea, this and that. Um, so I kind of see Ayame kind of like being the parent because she is an adult. And so obviously, you know, if he needs help, he can just go to her, but at the end of the day, it's just a job, so, eh. And then we have Megumi. Megumi is Seguri's classmate. So she kind of wants Seguri to come back to school. You know, hey, you know, you have that one friend who's just like, hey, I know you're going through a crap time, but hey, you know, get your stuff together. You know, get your stuff together. I want you to get back into school. But it's the way that she does it that just kind of irritates me a little bit. Like, she just barges in, like, hey, going to school, you know, everything's cool. And I, I'm i just over here thinking to myself, oh, man, I just really want to sucker punch this anime girl, like, right in the face, just, blah, and then be done. And she kind of flirts with the older brother, which is kind of weird because it's just like, uh, you're a little girl, why are you talking like that? Why are you doing these certain things? Why are you hitting on me? Leave me alone. And uh, honestly, you know, it's it's very cringeworthy. <laughs> the last character that's introduced in the first bits of the episode is Elf. Yes, her name is Elf. Not sure if that's her real name. She is also a light novelist who um, how can I say this? It's very, how can I say this? Um, she's very eccentric and very, yeah, I'm going to do this, but in a really weird kind of elf kind of way. It, it's kind of hard to describe her because she's so over the top. Um, and she also really likes Arrow Manga Sensei. So there's kind of like a love triangle and like when I say love, I don't mean like they love each other like I am going to date this person. No, it's like they admire them. Like the way that it's described is Elf really admires Aromanga Sensei and Masamune also adores Aromanga Sensei. So it's kind of weird, you know, so they kind of have this like kind of rivalry, but you know, towards more character development. They become like good friends, they even work side by side, uh, you know, not to collaborate, but just to, you know, produce a little bit better. Uh, there's a complete episode about it. It's, it's, I believe it's like episode five or four. Um, you know, my apologies. I watch a lot of anime and it's hard to watch anime and take notes while it's all in Japanese. Dub for the win. <laughs> Funimation, please sponsor us. Let me, let me tell you what I think about this anime. Um, Alright, so what I personally think about this anime is it's not necessarily that it's trash, but it's trash. Like, okay, so don't get offended by this, viewer. I'm watching you, our whole, our whole audience. I'm, 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 I'm closing in on you, Miguel. 
He goes, wait. I'll watch. <laughs> okay, so this anime is, is catered to a specific, very, very specific type of otaku and weeaboo. Um, essentially, what it is, it's, it's a harem anime. Yes, that's without, without a doubt, it's a harem anime. However, it's not afraid to go over the top with the way that they kind of do things. And what I mean by do things, I mean the smut wise. Like, hands down, I would not watch this with my grandmother. Not just because my grandmother hates me. Maybe I would watch this with my grandmother. Hold on. Abuelita? Yeah, yeah. Um, you want to watch this really perverted anime with me? No? Oh, okay. She said no, guys. So I'm, I'm sorry. So this anime is like over the top ridiculous. And I feel like the producers already know that. So they're just like, you know what? Go nuts. And another way to describe this genre is the emoto genre, which is starting to take by storm, which is essentially main guy, little sister. Emoto literally translates to little sister. Um, so there is kind of a weird you know, space here that I'm not gonna touch with a 10 foot pole. I'm gonna leave it at that. My favorite moments of this anime. I really, 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 really enjoy the animation. The animation is so fluid, like, it blows my mind that they're able to catch all those frames. Essentially, when he runs up to his little sister's room and bangs on the door, it's, it looks like an, like a, hot, blah, blah, blah. it looks like a Miyazaki film. Um, and it's just like, bah, 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 you know, and it looks so fluid. And that, that hands down is my favorite moment. And on top of that, the reason why that's my favorite moment is because it's funny. Because he's just like, oh crap, this is my little sister. <laughs> my rating for this anime it's a solid 3.5 out of 5. Only being, I cannot sit through this whole thing. Like, I got up to episode 5, which is kind of the mofo standard. Like, we'll, we'll watch about 5 episodes in, and then from there we'll talk about it. But, me, personally, if I really like the anime, I'll watch it all the way through, which I believe there's a good handful of episodes on there. And I'm probably going to watch it, but here's the thing, it's kind of one of those animes that you have to take a bit at a time. If not, you're going to drive yourself insane because you'll see nothing but cute girls, cute anime girls everywhere. Trust me. I, 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 I see anime girls. That's a, it's a success reference. Bruce Willis would be proud. So the only reason why I give it 3.5 out of 5 is because of the the characters are fun, um, but I feel like it could be better. Um, another pro to it is the fluidity of the animation. That hands down had me, had me just like, yes, so fluid. Another reason why I give it a 3.5 out of 5 is because of the music. The music was amazing because it has a very upbeat ska kind of vibe. And fun fact about Ben, Ben Facts. I really enjoy ska. I really enjoy ska music, and if you don't know what ska is, I, by all means, definitely look it up. It's trumpets, guitars, you know, kind of a punk vibe, you know, it's, it's really cool. So needless to say, this anime is kind of like the first anime that we reviewed a while back ago. Keijo, you remember that? You remember that. You remember that? I remember that. You remember that? I'm not talking to anybody over there. Keijo. Keijo was another one of those animes that you just definitely do not want to watch with a group of friends. Aromanga Sensei, on the other hand, you want to watch it with a big group of friends just to, you know, lull about it. Alrighty, so thank you so much for watching, and make sure to like and share with your senpais and your kohais, and let us know in a comment down below what you thought of Aromanga Sensei if you watched it. If you didn't watch it, still let us know what you thought about how I was talking to you very aggressively about the little brother 
See, and now I can't even say it. And remember, kids, you can't spell dweeb without we. Oh, God. Good night.